Let me take you on a journey, a journey to hell on earth, a journey to a place called Danan. This is the remote Agadan region of eastern Ethiopia, bordering on Somalia. It's an area mired in a guerrilla insurgency and devastated by a lingering drought. As filmmakers, we're on our way to Danan, a camp for displaced persons, to try and show the world how the people of the area are surviving. We're still far from our destination when we spot a group of people walking across the desert, also heading for the camp. They're carrying everything they own, they agree to stop and talk with us. She says, this is our 10th day of walking. We had nothing in our homes, nothing to eat. During our 10 days of walking, we stopped in every village and asked people to give us some food. And through begging, we have managed to reach this place. We lost our camels our goats, our sheep, and we don't know what is waiting for us in the shelter. We don't know whether there is going to be food. We have no alternative. We have to travel this way. Two boys and two girls died since we left our homes. My daughter died two days ago. She was 15. We can smell Danan even before we reach it. The skeletal remains of hundreds of animals litter the desert. Although we've been told what to expect, we are still shocked when we see it for ourselves. These are the remains of the most precious possessions the refugees brought with them. The camp lay ahead, and we feared the worst. Here it is, Danan now home to 7,000 people living in tiny huts, not even big enough to stand up in. I came here with my wife and children, and four of them are now dead. There is no food. I haven't had water in three or four days. There is no water. The boy is now my only child. The only thing remaining is our fate, to die. Abdi wants to show us the condition of his wife, Mariama. She's had nothing to eat in days and has been lying motionless in the hut. He tells us that she doesn't even have the strength to sit up by herself. I would rather lose all my property and still have Mariama. She is a very loving wife, very good to her children. I have been praying all night to get help from my family and wife. I'm in a desperate situation. I don't know what I'm going to do. Without her, we can't live. Even though we knew it wouldn't solve his problems, we gave Abdi much of our food for Mariama and the children. You are looking at all the medicine there is for the 7,000 people of Danan. They have no doctor. They have no nurse. We go to the food storehouse and are confronted by another fiasco. The district administrator, Adin Omar Fetin, explains. If I were to distribute the small amount of food left in the storehouse, there wouldn't be a glass, not a glass, for each of the 7,000 people living in the shelters. 
If I distribute that small amount, there could be a riot. Therefore, I've decided to use the small amount of food for distribution to new arrivals only. Some of them have been walking for 15 or 20 days. They are in the most critical need of food. And now we have no water. I don't know what I'm going to do. There are times when I think about hanging myself. The mental agony. I'm sure you must also be having that agony in your minds. You are a living witness. It's our last day in Danan. We're taken to see a woman and her three-year-old son, Kadir. Even without translation, the horror of her words is clear. Each afternoon, just before sunset, we've seen processions of men leaving the camp for the cemetery. We ask permission to join and film them. Today, they're bearing a two-year-old girl named Ambia. Her father is very gracious and welcomes us. He tells us that it is the third child he's lost in the last four months. As I watch the simple ritual, I feel helpless that we've not been able to do anything to aid these people. I feel angry that the world and its bureaucracies have forgotten the people of Danan. It has now been months since we left Danan, and not a day goes by that I don't think of the time we spent there and the fate of the people we met. They chant, God, this is an innocent two-year-old child who has died. Please let her soul rest in heaven. On the day we left Anand, there were over 200 new arrivals. On the day we left Anand, they still had not received a food shipment. On the day we left Anand, they still had no water. On the day we left Anand, three-year-old Kadir died. Shortly after looking at the video you just saw, a group of eight friends decided they wanted to do something to help the desperate people of Danan. Within a few short months, we had actually raised enough money to open a clinic in this tiny, run-down, abandoned building right here in Danan. In less than two years, the Danan Project transformed the tiny clinic into this 29-room hospital. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, and the throng that has been waiting outside the gate is allowed in. Some of these people have walked for 10 or 15 days to get to the hospital, and then spent the night outside the wall waiting for their turn to see a doctor. Mothers and children sit patiently, waiting for each child to be weighed and measured, hoping to get an allotment of supplemental meals. This is done on a regular basis to ensure that the food goes to the neediest. The Danan Project, along with our local partner, the Agadan Welfare and Development Association, or ODA, provided 72,000 supplemental meals of Plumpy Nut, which was formulated for anemic and malnourished women and children. Each packet contains 500 calories and is fortified with milk, minerals, and vitamins. Morning rounds are conducted by our head doctor, who sees a variety of ailments among our inpatients. The most common diseases we see are malaria, gastrointestinal disorders, respiratory diseases, and malnutrition. Sometimes, children bring children in for treatment. This little girl's brother has diarrhea, a touch of pneumonia, and a fungal infection. The doctor writes them a prescription and tells them to return in one week for follow-up care. A full supply of the latest medicines is kept on hand for distribution by our pharmacist. 
All medical care and medicines are provided free of charge by the Danan Project and its partner ODA. The hospital is the only free medical facility of its kind in the Agaden region, home to over four million people. Our hospital includes a lab capable of carrying out a battery of sophisticated tests. Donations also allowed us to buy ultrasound equipment and to train our staff in its use. We have seen things we never dreamed of previously, like a laboratory and ultrasound. Now we need, and it would be very nice, if you add a tuberculosis program in the hospital. With the cooperation of the elders and religious leaders, we support a program to put a stop to the brutal practice of female genital mutilation, which is common in the entire region. Surprisingly, just as many men as women attend the classes, and now as a result of the program, there is less female genital mutilation in Danan. Death still stalks Danan, so emergencies are seen any time of day or night. This woman walked for almost 30 hours carrying her desperately ill child. She says the child has had diarrhea for almost two weeks. Four hours after these scenes were shot, the child died. Two hours later, a woman with a problem pregnancy gave birth to a healthy child in our maternity ward. Our ambulance transports critically ill patients and is also used three days a week for a medical outreach program to neighboring villages. In most cases, it's better for people to be treated in their own homes, often saving them a lengthy journey and lessening the burden on the hospital. Our pickup truck delivered thousands of medicated mosquito nets to every family in Danan, as well as every family in the surrounding villages. Undoubtedly, this effort saved hundreds of lives. Since we got mosquito nets, there was a great reduction of malaria patients here, whether they are men, women, or children. Other people came here and promised us things, but didn't keep their promises. The Danan Project and ODA always keep their promises. One promise we made was a water pipeline to bring an adequate supply of potable water to the people of Danan for the first time in their history. The citizens are providing all the labor free of charge. The first of the watering stations and reservoirs are under construction and completion of the nine mile pipeline is expected within months. We sent five representatives from Danan and each of the surrounding villages to receive training in new agricultural practices and in the use of new drought resistant seeds. With the training we received, we learned new techniques and got new seeds. You can see with your own eyes the difference between the new seeds and the traditional seeds, and they were planted at the same time. Just as they did when we first visited six years ago, the people of Danan still sing songs, but today they are songs of joy and hope and thanks. We were living in the dark and you brought us into the light. We need you not to get tired and don't give up. It's difficult to believe what's been accomplished in a little over two years. And none of it would have been possible without the support, generosity and thoughtfulness of people just like you. And so I hope you'll continue to support us to enable us to make the lives of the grateful people of Danan a little better and to make their future a lot brighter. Thank you.